Welcome to the Insom Insider. Welcome to the Inside. This is the Insom Insider, your source for Oracle Apex tips, techniques, methodology, and really wherever that discussion takes us. I'm your host, Monty Lachele, coming to you from chilly, chilly Houston, Texas. And with me today, as always, is my good friend and member of the Insum family, Michelle Scamini. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Monty. <laughs> and Sochi, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> At the helm. Keeping us on time and task is our producer, French Canadian, Mark Wool. Bark for me, Mark. It's Thursday, December 17th, episode 24. And thank you for spending a piece of your afternoon with us. Coming to you today through the miracle of StreamYard. Michelle, you did an awesome job last week. I am going to be forced to raise my game. Thank you. Thank you. And you'd think I'd know by now we uh, are, they say never to work with kids or animals and my animal is always around, but you were missed last week. But uh, as you saw, I had it, I had it already. You were sort of with us in, in spirit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I appreciated, uh, I appreciated you pasting me in there. It did make me feel like I was, I was involved. I, uh, but uh, no, you, you guys did great. And uh, you know, we had, you, 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 uh, Francis, myself, uh, I mean, all the people that we've had from, from Ensom participating in the Insider, uh, it just, it just works. It just works. And we're real happy, uh, you know, to, to continue to, to put this, to put this content out as we're doing, um, you guys that are attending, uh, please give us your feedback and let us know what subjects you'd like to hear in the future. We're going to continue to follow the demand and your feedback is very, very important. Yeah. And as always, we've said it before um, here on uh, as we're doing lives, we don't know exactly who's joining. We love to see you saying hi and, and putting in your comments. Uh, so please let us know uh, if you're here, if you're joining, where you're joining from, uh, and we'll pop your, your comments up on the screen. So that was a great uh, foray uh, intro, Monty. So I thought I did great last week, but Francis said that he actually wanted to come in and uh, co-host today's show. So, I mean, who am I to, uh, I will gladly oblige Francis. Welcome to the show. Hi. Well, hey Francis. Hey Francis. Good to have you join us here. Michelle, uh, before you, before you depart, I have something. Yesterday you mentioned that you had a paper cut and you know, <laughs> last, last time we, we talked about, would you rather be uh, attacked by a horse sized duck or 100 duck sized horses? And that yeah. was a lot of fun and everybody had their comments about it. It got me thinking though, it's like, I hate paper cuts. So this week's edition of Would You Rather, I would say I would rather take a bullet than have a paper cut, provided I get to choose where, like if it's an earlobe or maybe the webbing of my thumb or, or something like that, or, you know, maybe in the love handle. But other than that, I hate paper cuts. I feel like you need to specify where I had this paper cut though, Monty. It was under the fingernail. So hence the would oh. you rather take it, you know, take a bullet or a paper cut. So audience, yeah, let us know what you would rather. <laughs> if I got a paper cut. I will cut, leave you on that happy note. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I, I would, if I had a paper cut, I would probably confess to the Kennedy assassination. I'm telling you, it, I just hate paper cuts. Uh, so anyway. Michelle, thanks for uh, thanks for all you did last week. Have a good show, you guys. And uh, we will get this uh, we'll get this uh, moving. Francis, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you for. Uh, You're not gonna ask me about paper cuts, are you? It's like I don't know. Okay, what, what's your what's your? No, no, I, I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I hate them. I hate I them. Mind. You talk about pushing my buttons. <laughs> I hate paper cuts. The worst are cardboard, and uh, I just hate it. All right, uh, we're gonna get plugged in with plugins today. And we're going to have two gents that we always seek out at the various conferences. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe I should explain to some of you out there. You see, we used to attend what is called conferences and that's where thousands of people would show up in person and they would discuss technical topics. The good old days, right? <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> the good old days. And uh, that's just kind of why we're doing this uh, or the, the catalyst for this 
uh, from the start, Francis, is we missed we missed seeing guys, uh, that, particularly the two men that are going to be uh, joining us today. Uh, we miss it, and we didn't want to we didn't want to have that experience go away. So, uh, without further ado, these are guys that we've known for a very long time. Uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to be joined by Peter Ragnish and Matt Nolan of Foex. Oh, <laughs> oh man. man, a little animation going there. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Doing, Thanks. doing Hi, good. Guys. Great, great, great. Thanks for having us. Great intro. Uh, no, I don't like paper cuts, but I, I like bullets less, I guess. <laughs> yeah, when you got to compare a, a 44 Magnum, you know, caliber bullet versus a paper cut, I think, you know, come on. Okay, I'm Chop in back Clint Eastwood or a paper cut, you got to take the paper cut. I'm in the minority, I know, but I don't need two earlobes. I can get by with one. All right, uh, this has got to be uh, this is, is this has got to be a big deal. You guys are on the Inside Insider. Yes, thank you for having us. It's great. <laughs> well, to be here. it's something we've wanted to do for a long time. Well, like oh, Monty yeah. said, like uh, we we uh, we uh, we want to bring back this uh, you know this feeling or this this uh, occasions to get together and talk. And then we thought of you, and then we you know we we've talked also uh, together. We tried to keep contact with the community and and uh, i think uh, it's great to have you guys uh, here and and that's why i'm i'm here also replacing uh, michelle today she's worked very hard but uh, i really wanted to be part of that conversation and feel like we're in a conference and then we can share on different things plugins of course yeah we're going to oh, yeah. talk plugins and and we're you know we we can get we can get down in the weeds if we need to get down in the weeds you know we we want to encourage everyone to to uh, put your comments in there. If you have questions for Matt and, and Peter, get, get them, get them asked, we'll get them answered. But we really just kind of want to have this conversation, uh, talk about the why these things are important and much less about the how. If you have a question about how to do this stuff, um, if, if just re pick up the phone, send an email to uh, the guys at Foex and they can, they, can definitely, um, they can definitely steer you in the right direction when it comes to, to uh, plugins. Uh, Francis brought up the uh, in our prep call. Francis brought up the, the topic of how how'd you guys meet? I mean, is it eHarmony match? Uh, did you? How, you know, <laughs> I mean, you guys didn't grow up across the street. Well, especially me. that that uh, Matt, you're in Finland, right? And then, then yeah, uh, Peter, you're in Austria. And I'm, I was also curious to see to to know how you guys got to do some Apex uh, and, and got involved with with Apex at the same time. All right, who's going first? Peter, you. Hey, me? Well, I'll be talking for like half the session, so you better go, yeah, see? otherwise <laughs> otherwise, you'll have like two minutes to talk, so you go. All right, it's quite quite easy for, for me. I I, uh, I worked with Oracle and, and forms and databases for a very long time, and and I, I thought about, you know, dropping out of that business because it I didn't feel like it's um, up, to, up to date anymore. So I was looking for something else, and then a good friend introduced me to Apex, and that's when everything kicked off. It, that that was a great moment. Who was that so that was friend? long before I met Matt. Who was that good say. friend? Who was that good friend? Uh, Patrick. Patrick, Patrick who? who's now on the the Apex <laughs> team. Oh. <laughs> so luckily, uh, he he showed me that, and he convinced me that this is a future, and and that's that's great. So. I've been doing Apex since since then, and I was, as usual, always interested in doing more and you know trying to to please our customers. And along the road, uh, I met Matt online. So it is some kind of online dating. <laughs> I think we, we met online first before we ever uh, went to a conference together. Yeah, now you're just making it awkward. Like seriously, <laughs> <laughs> but. I, I, I guess I could explain it probably a little bit better. Um, of course. Is Well, you know, my background is uh, I actually started out as a DBA. So uh, I was a database administrator, you know, working for uh, local government in Australia. Uh, obviously, I, I got a little bit fed up with working in government. It's kind of like it's not the job where you want to start. It's probably the job you want where you're going to retire from basically it's the last job you want so looking for something a little bit more exciting and and also checking out how much money people were earning in england you know like it was a bit of a no-brainer so uh 
flew to England and, and worked there for uh, a good four or five years. Um, I started consulting and, and working for uh, working for a company that, that did um, uh, clinical trials and all that sort of stuff. So, but anyway, like I said, this will end up being long if I just keep talking about all the details. Long story short, I end up working down in Brighton, um, you know, and I, I met my wife uh, in London as well. And, and we basically started living together in Brighton and we spent four years there, had two kids. And that's kind of where the motivation came to actually work a bit harder was once the kids came on board and I was like, hey, I haven't really been saving any money or doing anything. And the DBA work, you know, like uh, I was always doing a little bit of development on the side. So when I finished, you know, I did, when I was at university, I did programming and stuff like that. And I did a lot of Java development and, you know, I enjoyed that. And so as a DBA, I was always looking for sort of developer type tasks, you know, creating reports, writing scripts to collect data and that sort of stuff. And then uh, it was when working a, in this consultancy firm and they asked me um, to, to create some reports in Apex you know, like I did that and then they wanted a checkbox, you know, like like on the report, you know, to be able to select things. And I was like, oh, uh, I don't think you can do that. And and the boss said, you can't do that. That's a useless product. Like, seriously. And I was like, well, wait, wait, wait a sec, because I, I did like Apex because I was e easily able to create a few things. And I was like, wait, let me investigate that. And so I started investigating how to do it. I did it. I felt really good about it. And then that sort of got me started on, on doing a little bit more and more and more. And it was always the boss saying, hey, that's not good enough. You know, I want something a little bit more more uh, feature rich because they were using Swing, Java Swing uh, UI or whatever for one of their, one of their um, apps. And so I was always trying to match like a desktop-like experience. Uh, you know, from the get-go with Apex. And, and that led me to hunting around for things. And then I started creating integrations. And, you know, I really got bitten by the developer bug. And I left the DBA stuff behind, which was really uber stressful. Like, uh, I, you know, development is so much better than, than you know, mission yeah, Usually it's the other way around, no? It's like you go from <laughs> dev to DBA. Or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was quite lucky because my salary didn't drop. It stayed the same. So I was quite lucky from that perspective. And, and you know, the, the company that I was working for had a bunch of customers. You know, like actually, you know, as a DBA, I used to look after the Economist magazine's databases. And and that was that was quite cool going into London and going into their office. It was like really posh and everything. And we were kind of working in a sweatshop down in Brighton. So it was, <laughs> it was kind of nice to get into London. Um, but, you know, like these different experiences and stuff like that, you know, like so we were able to, you know, find some opportunities to build applications and stuff. And then I started blogging about it. So, you know, like I because we were in a consultancy environment, you, you kind of having to do a bit of salesy type stuff. And, and I don't know, for some reason, I just started blogging and, um, you know, like my blogging in the beginning probably wasn't great and everything. But uh, I also got into Photoshop and I, I really started doing a lot of different things and and it was through the blogging and stuff like that which is how i i came across peter you know was in the community you know you'd be sort of following people and stuff like that and you know i'd just be posting the stuff that i'm working on uh and and so eventually having two kids now in brighton you know we there were two and one and we decided we wanted to sort of settle down somewhere and it wasn't really in england i wasn't wasn't too keen so it was australia or finland and you know, Finland won out and we've been here now 10 years. Uh, we end up having two more kids, so that's four in total. And, but after coming to Finland, you know, I, I actually got made redundant um, after three months, which was a bit of a big shock. I didn't expect it. And then that started like a real sort of, um, a real mad dash to try and set something up, which uh, I just went freelancing trying to uh, you know find opportunities and I worked on some crazy projects with some crazy people at different times taking any sort of job and you know I also started writing plugins at that time you know to generate some side income uh, basically if I could so there weren't many people actually selling commercial plugins I think I think Dimitri and John for Apex Evangelist was was the only other company at the time yeah. so there wasn't much competition. <laughs> 
you know, and and I wrote like a multiple file upload plugin, and and you know, so I was looking for something that was hard to do at the time, but people might want. And anyway, so it's through these work efforts and stuff like that, and posting stuff. And I I, I distinctly remember I did like this body chart for a physiotherapy company. And Peter, you know, replied on the blog post, hey, that's really awesome and stuff like that. And, you know, like coming back to when I was building all these desktop, like wanting to build desktop like functionality, I found uh, I found a web uh, JavaScript framework, uh, Sentia EXDJS, um, and, and started integrating that to try and get a consistent UI because we were building apps for customers and we wanted a consistent look and feel. They were looking for a rich type of user interface, and it was a, a commercially appealing way because basically if you go in there as, hey, we do Apex development, and they're like, well, we can do Apex development. What are you bringing that makes you different? So that was the differentiator that we were trying to bring. Um, and then it was through uh, creating some plugins using Sentia EXTGS you know, that I, that I realized that, hey, there's a business opportunity here. You know, what if, if we able to put all these together into like a framework, um, you know, maybe that, that we could build a company out of that. And, and so at that time, it was like, can't do this on my own. I've, I've, I haven't got enough, <laughs> haven't got enough. Uh, there's not enough hours in the day with kids and stuff like that. And, you know, because I'd, I'd looked around, I'd shopped around, I'd, I'd, I'd had a few dates, you know, with different developers and stuff. Uh, I was in Helsinki meeting a couple of local people and that didn't work out. And uh, I, I think I approached Peter and I said, hey, are you interested in, in something? And, and Peter actually flew out from Austria and, uh, you know, we both stayed in a hotel in Helsinki. Um, and it was funny because Peter was acting all strange when I met him. Uh, apparently, he brought over a couple of beers in his suitcase to give to us and uh, that exploded, you know, on the, on the plane because of the cabin pressure. Oh, so oh. all his clothes were like, were like trash, smelling a beer. I, I thought he was, you know, a bit of a, I thought he had a bit of a drinking problem. I think that was just a cover. Uh, Matt, I want to get, I want to get, uh, I want to get Peter's take on this too, but we're out of time. It'll keep going. I mean, I know that's I probably. I tell you guys, I came here with more than one question. Yeah, we I mean, have a list of questions and that's going to be a, a we're going to get to them sometime in the spring. <laughs> yeah, after that night together, you know, it was a match made in heaven. There we go. And, All right. and then that's where the company got born from, Hotel in Helsinki. Well oh, said, well. Matt. Well said. Yes. E -E -E. Short night. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's, uh, Peter. Uh, okay. So you guys, you guys kind of met online. You guys decided, hey, we're better. Uh, let, let's do this thing. Um, was it was it plugins from the start? Was it was it trying to to uh, was it trying to to really emulate the desktop functionality from the start? Or I mean, you know, Matt said he was looking for things that were difficult to do and and thought that a plugin would 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 be the right approach. I mean, w w did you guys go all in with plugins per se, and that was your single fo your your focus? Or was it more just a general Apex consultancy and then you started to get pushed more and more into the plugin space? Uh, no, it, it, it was plugins. So we, we, we said, well, if, you, if we want to do something that's new and, and nobody else does, uh, and, and you know, we, we set up a company together, we, we have to go all in. So we said, well, let's create plugins, plugins, plugins. And, and the important thing, those plugins should work together for whatever goal, right? I'm, I'm not sure if, if you know, creating desktop-like applications is the right term, but um, definitely building something uh, that wasn't possible at the time or wasn't easy to achieve, right? You, you can do whatever you want in Apex. It's, it's ex extensible, it's open, so you can achieve everything. Uh, but not everyone can achieve everything. That's that's the big thing, right? So if you want to enable others to achieve certain things, then give them a plugin, and they can do it. Well, you know, we 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 use plugins, but we use them pretty judiciously. Um, you know, because you know, there's there's 
pros and cons to using plugins. I mean, for you guys are all in on plugins, so you probably look at it as a whole lot of pros and very few cons. We, we, we think there's pros and cons. We do use them and they are extremely beneficial. But like, what are some of the more common use cases or when would you, when would you say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and invest the time and the energy to create a plugin for this, as opposed to just, you know, you know, doing it a one-off. Well, when would you do not? <laughs> that that's the question. I, I gotta admit, for for every, so we we do have that plugin framework which is big and an enterprise type. So let's put that aside. Let's focus on single plugins, and and there is a bunch of plugins out there in the community, and and we also released some of those, and then others do. You guys create plugins, or some of your your developers do. Uh, so that it's that there are so many advantages of creating a plugin. The only downside is uh, it takes time. <laughs> yeah. Right. A, you can solve your use case quite quick, uh, but to package it as a plugin for anyone else to use, it takes way more effort. You need to to think about different different modes of operation. You, you need to think about settings and you know different behavior, documentation examples. So probably for every plugin we released, there is tens or dozens we haven't released because there is still a long way to go or it's, it's simply not, not feasible to do. And how do you approach like the upgrades and then, you know, because when Apex comes out, there's, there's a lot of upgrades within a year, usually like two nowadays. And, and how do you approach that? Do you, you, you usually see that they're upward compatible, that most of the time they work or you always have to wait like a couple and, and retest everything and recertify or re rebuild your plugins and make sure that they work. What's your approach on that? Well, uh, you know, we we aim to release, you know, uh, the open source ones, a set of them for every Apex release. So at the moment, we're certifying 20.2 and, and we'll release a set of FOSS plugins that will support 20.2. But technically, they, they still support 20.2 because, I mean, like these ones are pretty small utility type plugins like that are, are just useful for, uh, you know, regular sort of tasks that you're going to do you know we've got like notifications we've got things like timing actions debouncing things and throttling things or delaying things um you know we've got uh you know some interactive grid functionality for adding buttons to menus and to the toolbar and stuff like that so you know that there's not a lot of overhead um basically in in ma maintaining and managing them and and uh, you know, releasing them. So we, we try to follow, we want to follow the Apex release pattern. So we'll release FOSS plugins at least twice a year. Um, and what we want to do is add more to more plugins to them as we release as well. But we've also made a point that we might release plugins in between releases. So we're not tying them directly to a package that you only get it twice a year. You know, they'll come out basically when they're ready. Um, yeah, there is overhead, always overhead in testing and stuff like that, having environments to, to do that. But we've got a team of guys and, you know, we manage it between tasks, between work projects. So end of year, we're actually really busy at the moment. So which is why we're a little bit behind, um, you know, on releasing for 20.2 support. But it is coming very soon. You know, we've got, uh, we've been working on it. Uh, and there are a couple of extra plugins that we're going to introduce. So, so can you explain a bit that I know you have like the FOX, like you said, Peter, like there's the, the, the whole framework part. And then now you, you guys have uh, individual plugins, I understand. So what's can you go there a bit and explain what what's your approach on those two things? They're, they're two different things, right? It's actually three different things. It's it's the the enterprise framework, if, if you want to call it like that. Um, uh, then we started to, to build some standalone commercial plugins. So the first one being released is uh, a file upload and image annotator plugin. So it's quite handy because you can not only upload files, but you can also you know paint on pictures and, and set markers. And there, there is a bunch of interesting use cases for that. Anyway, mm -hmm. there is uh, other commercial plugins in the works. Matt has more details on that. Um, but the third part is, is open source plugins. 
because we uh, we we found there is there is need for many tiny things, or we we just wanted many things for for ourselves. And we said, well, uh, we we don't you know we just want to give them out. Um, it's it's not worth to sell it, uh, uh, but it's still a good open source use case and. So we we pushed them to Apex World. Um, they, they were so kind to introduce new categories because we said, well, they are free. They are MIT licensed. You can use them in any type of project for free. But if you want, or for some, um, you know, regulation purposes, you need some kind of commercial support. We are providing uh, support for that. So that's why you see commercially support written on yeah. on Apex World or those plugins. But it's it's optional, right? Uh, you, you still get the same plugin. You just might get a, a, a tiny, quicker bug fixes or stuff like that. Well, that's nice because I feel like sometimes that's the question that we got we get a lot is like you know what what happens after once I start using it, security wise, upgrading, and then support and whatever else. So you guys are offering all of that. I, I find that's pretty pretty good. Well, uh, you know, it's it's a bit of a no-brainer for us because we're doing that sort of work all the time. So it's not a huge overhead for us. Um, you know, we, we started an initiative to, because we want to increase the usage of plugins because, you know, there are people like yourselves that are a little bit skeptical or, you know, it, it's technical debt basically that you're taking on when you get a plugin because, yeah, you get that win up front, that little hit, but basically over the longer term, it's like, well, hey, when upgrading, new versions of database, you know, operating system, new versions of browser, so many different variables changing, you know, and, and you can find yourself uh, that you've used that plugin extensively or it's in a critical part of your application and, and it stops you from upgrading and, you know, there's a cost that happens, there's a big cost impact. Um, so it is something to really, really think about. And for us, we want it to be the company that, you know, like uh, is, is just there to support you if you need it. If you find yourself stuck in that situation, well, there is somewhere to go to, you know, rather than going, oh, I don't know how we resolve this. Well, it's, hey, you can come to us and, you know, we can get you out of that situation. And, you know, we also want to increase the promotion of plugins or the usage of them. So we, we did an initiative to uh, support other people's plugins as well. So there's a number of developers that we currently support um, their plugins for them. And you know, we what we're trying to do too is uh, basically we get some support money coming in for those, and, and we funnel that back to the developers basically as well. Because we know what it's like. You know, I started out as a freelancer, and I know it's a it's tough. You know, oh, and yeah. yeah, and and you know, we want to be able because now we're in a good position that we can provide, you know, that that level of support, be there for them accept the money because, you know, we're a reputable company now. We've been around for eight years and, you know, we, we just want people, we, you know, we want to support other developers, help other developers. Um, and, you know, we just want the usage of plugins because it's just saving time really at the end of the day. That's what they are. It's, you know, and there, it's just a, a different question. type of development. Yeah, Matt, hold, hold on a second, Matt. There's yeah, a question here in the, in, the, uh, in the comments, like from Ashok, he says like uh, commercially supported plugins, does this consist in enhancement requests? Yeah, as per yes. need. So you guys take enhancements uh, requests also? Of course. I mean, like, there's within reason. I mean, like, if you ask for something to be enhanced, that yeah. you know, there's a thousand hours of work for it. Well, <laughs> you know, obviously, we're not gonna we're not gonna do those sort of enhancements unless you want to pay a little bit more money for it. But small enhancements, small improvements. Yeah, I mean, we'll 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 do those, no problem. Uh, you know, we just actually, you know, um, we just actually had a request come in the other day for for a small enhancement, and and we turned it around. You know, we got the it came, the email came in at 10 p.m. and and they had the plugin update by you know 10 a.m. in the morning. Wow. So you're saying you're supporting other plugins than your own, right? Well, that's right. So there's a couple of developers, Ronnie Weiss. We support some of some that's of his. Interesting. I think that's a good idea actually, because again, yeah. that's something we hear a lot. It's like, okay, we're using that, but uh, you know, we're not too sure what's going to happen or if we get support, but. Francis, it's in the uh, great idea. In the comment uh, in our in in the comment, uh, Jocko Fori uh, or Jocko, I'm not sure, but it said uh, that they have that exact situation. So I would say reach out to the guys at Foex uh, 
it said that they have a they have a, a plugin that that the developer is no longer supporting. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So how do you approach like the new features that Oracle brings in? Because uh, like we know the Apex team, you know they always improve and everything. And and I remember back in the days, like with the first versions of Apex and HTML DB, we did build a lot of JavaScript stuff and then try to you know. Uh, come up with things that weren't in the product, and then that's kind of a reason why they opened it, the, the plugins and everything to add new features and new items and 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 regions and whatnot. But they're still improving, and sometimes we're using a plugin. The list of value is one that comes to mind. That oh, uh, it's in the product after. Do you deal with that in any way, or you just don't care, and then it's just. Uh, yeah, and, and that's that's the great thing. As long as you encapsulate whatever you build in in a plugin, it's it's easier to swap out. So we recently had a uh, an Apex upgrade project that came from roughly five one, but some apps were five zero or four two um, to nineteen two, and they had a couple hundred Apex applications, uh, and they used the Super LOE heavily. Yeah. So I think they had 811 occurrences of wow. Super LOE, wow. which didn't behave too perfect anymore in 19.2. So we said, well, we could fix the Super LOE, but going forwards, you might want to use the Apex built-in, the, the new um, pop-up LOE, which is great in, since, since 19.2. So they said, okay, yeah, how much, you know, how much time does it take you to swap out all those occurrences? I said, well, uh, let's let's take a different approach. Uh, we can write you a script to swap them out all at once. That obviously means you need to invest a little bit of time in the beginning, um, but for this number of of tasks, even if it just takes like ten minutes to to change that old super LOE into manually into a new pop up LOE, it's eight hundred times ten minutes, and then you haven't tested it. Yeah, you need to test. So they, they were quite relieved to to see how it works. That's great. Uh, yeah. So we, we usually we whatever we try to do, we, we take a step back and try to think of is there a different approach than to just build it manually? Because even though the you know the the, the first task is, is exciting, but if you have to, to repeat it over and over, uh, I I, I don't want to do that. I'm too too lazy for that, right? <laughs> I want to All do right. fun and exciting stuff. There, there is a caveat that we have to say there, though, is, is you know, technically Oracle doesn't support you updating the data dictionary directly. So for everybody listening, um, you know, you kind of got to be careful when you do something like that. All right. But well, I haven't said we do. We're professionals. Right? Well, you know, but we're, we're professionals. We, we know, you know, uh, what we're doing. And and that's the thing. It it saves so much time, you know. Like, and this is the thing about the great thing about Apex that it's all in in SQL. You know, it's all in tables, and you can use SQL, you know, to query it. We do through the views and stuff like that. And you know, there's so many cool things that we can do with Apex because it's dynamically generated. And we can query, you know, the structure of a page as we're rendering it, and do some really interesting stuff because of that design. Which also means, hey, swapping out old functionality for new, and yeah, it does. I understand what you, where you're getting at, Francis, with saying that you know uh, Oracle brings out new functionality. You know, when we started with our our framework in the beginning, it was the grid component, which was one of the main components that we brought in for inline editing, just to solve some of the problems that the tabular forms were having. Um, and and obviously that was great. But you know, 2016, Oracle uh, introduced the the interactive, interactive grid. grid. So, and, you know, a lot of people say, well, hey, your product's dead after that. But, you know, like, it's not exactly true because there's a lot of functionality that we provide. Uh, and, and there's a lot of still capability that we have in our grid that's not in uh, the Apex grid, but vice versa too. So, you know, we, we obviously lean and, and advise people on what the best tool and solution is for the job. So we do standard Apex projects, um, you know, and that's why we've got some of these uh, open source plugins as well is is because at the end of the day when we're doing these projects we're trying to make it more efficient you know like we're trying to do things in a more efficient way and in a more structured way because writing plugins just centralizes all your code essentially 
So, and when you're building a lot of different applications, you know, like you can manage it centrally. It just ticks all the boxes for better development. You know, like, and people go, well, hey, it's plugins. But for me, it's just structured development, really, in Apex, you know, structured customizations. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like macros and shortcuts and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, and it's, it's available in the product, right? They made it so that uh, it's made for that. I had yeah. another question. Uh, the, in 22, there's this new uh, plugin type, like the REST data source connector plugin, which I find is quite interesting. Uh, did you guys started to do something with that and then and looked at it? Or is there any plugins available that, I don't know, uh, do, do you see do you see any plugins or do you have any ideas around that? Or what's your take on this? So we, 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 we love them. The, the, the better Apex, Apex gets, the, the more the more um, possibilities we have, right? Then the more plugin types, the better. So e everything on, is an opportunity um, in terms of the the rest AP uh, the rest plugins we haven't implemented one yet um, yeah Matt well yeah I mean we wait for customer requirements so you know we're obviously back in the day you know you could spend a lot of time doing r and d and stuff like that but um, unfortunately you know now with the workload that we've got you know those that free time is is really limited Boy, um, well, it's, uh, you know, like I'm actually, I don't know when I've got free time, um, but uh, <laughs> I, I do actually have a holiday coming up. I'm, I'm leaving at 4 a.m. in the morning to go up to, to Lapland skiing and, oh, you know, I'll, I'll be working till midnight tonight. So, <laughs> you know, like trying to get everything, every last little thing done so I can have a bit of a break, but I'll still be taking the laptop. Yeah, um, I, know what you're, I know what you're saying, though, Matt, is like, you know, in the, nat the nature of our businesses is that, you know, you've got people coming off of projects and, and people going on to other projects. And so there's always... A, a transition period. There's always a bench, you know. Obviously, uh, consultants try to keep that bench small. But I mean, we're 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 just like you guys now, where you know the, there's no bench, and and we're just we're just going a mile a minute. Um, so, and that's that's another segue I wanted to make into. I'm glad that you guys went all in on plugins because it's sometimes if it's going to take more time for us to create a plugin that we need for a specific instance. That translates to higher costs for the customer. So it, we have a hard time, uh, you know, determining when we invest. Uh, it used to be, you know, if you had if you had some people that could could make that investment, people that were transitioning between projects, that's one thing. But it's a, it's it, we appreciate being able to use these plugins and not having to develop them ourselves because you know we we want to be we want to do the right thing for our customers. Um, I think there's the, a good analogy. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I didn't mean to jump in. The one thing that we say is that if you're going to use plugins, and we do the same thing, is that you have to use plugins from a reputable source, and and there's no one more reputable in the space, in the plugin space, than you guys. Well, well, hey, it's it's either that or or be be ready to take it on as your code. Yeah, right. That's that's okay, right? If you decide, hey, I, I'll use this plugin as a jump start, and and. It's part of my application now, so I take care of, you know, any future upgrades. That's all right, but it has to be a conscious decision. Yeah, absolutely. We have a question here uh, from uh, Anton. It says, "I'd like to see a feature plugin, the ability to add large-scale functionality like the Apex features, feedback, activity, monitoring. Any idea if this is in the works?" Well, we, we would have to relate this question to Joel, who just joined before. <laughs> hey, Joel. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I'd love to, to see something like, like packages or plugins with shared components, like so that you can bundle a plugin with um, tables or packages or whatnot. That would be interesting. Think of yeah. what we could do then. But it's a, it's a bit more than a plugin, though. I mean, like like these big features. I mean, you know, we're interested in in doing stuff like this. So we've done, you know, there's all the little small plugins and stuff like that. But what's missing are big features. So, you know, we've just currently uh, we're about to finish a Kanban board. You know, which we consider a big feature, um, and it's just a region plugin that you'll add on the page. Isn't um, there one uh, available already? On there the is one now. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Sure? What, what sure. are you guys going to do differently in that? 
Well, you know, our, our goal is is the user experience and stuff like that, is that we've built it from scratch ourselves as well. So we've got full control where we can choose, you know, the, the functionality that we add to it. Uh, you know, we've modeled it basically on Trello. So we've had a good look, you know, like at, at uh, applications that people use regularly and for us Trello you know like is something that we've used for years and you know we're just looking at bringing that functionality uh, into Apex you know really easily so you know we we looked at the the open source plugin and and that's great you know like and it's good for people it's free um, you know it does a really good job it's probably even got some more functionality than, than what we've got in terms of they call it swim lanes basically so in the beginning, we're not adding swim lanes. Um, we're just adding lists and stuff like that. But, you know, we're using it for our planning as well internally in the company. Um, you know, we've also got a number of customers that are interested in it. So that's another reason. Um, but to answer Anton's question, yeah, I mean, that's as big as you're going to get because the region plugin is the biggest thing that you've got. All right. And when you talk about what you get from Apex with the administration and, and getting 50 pages in your app and stuff like that, you know, you kind of like need a generator app, you know, essentially like, like that, that has some sort of metadata customization capability and you can generate half your application. Um, I do know that a lot of people have talked about that in the past about opening up APIs, the Apex APIs to not just to create stuff, but to update it. Because that's the real issue with the generator is it's fine creating stuff, but you really need to be able to update it as well with, with an API. And if they did release that, yeah, I think we would see something like what Anton's uh, referring to. But from a plugins perspective, you'll get these big region plugins. So, you know, we've got we've got the Kanban board that we're looking at. We're working, we're about to start work on a scheduler as well. So it's like a calendar, but with a timeline component. Um, so, you know, there's a lots of different products that are available out there. Um, so some things we, we decide to build from scratch and, and others we relicense existing software. And, and we tend to stick away from open source software you know, we want commercial based software where we know we can get support ourselves. We know that there's an ongoing life cycle for it because a lot of open source projects, they run out of steam uh, at the end of the day because the developer, it's usually an individual developer and, you know, they've moved on to another job and we all know what working for free feels like. It's, it's, a, it's nice yeah. in the beginning when you're excited about it, but when you have to maintain it, you, that yeah. fizzles out. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a relationship, you know, in a way, you know, like that, <laughs> that intense three months feelings, especially with a girlfriend that you're like, yeah, you're not marriage material. You know, it's, it's like some of the open source plugins that are out there. So, so what's what's uh, what's your top five uh, best sellers as far as plugins are concerned? What what are your your top plugins that you see that are being used a lot, or your your key plugins that uh, you feel like okay, th those are 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 winners type of thing. Well, I mean, it's it's difficult because we've got we've got the framework basically, so that's something that we've had for for the whole time. Like we've had the image editor uh, come recently, so you know we've got that in a couple of customers. Um, I mean, we're kind of new in the commercial space basically because we only released something earlier in the year, like like these individual plugins. Uh, funnily enough. You know, I actually built individual plugins before we started the company and licensed and sold them. And now there's United Codes. Um, you know, uh, Dimitri hired Bartosz, and and they're outputting some some nice plugins as well. So it's good to see more people in the space that companies are going to have more choice. You yeah. know, there's more things that they can go to to get the functionality that they need because, really app development speed of development is is key for businesses these days and and that's what plugins really does is it gives you a big boost you know it's like get you know apex is great and it can't provide everything you know they can't they can't afford to just have everything in there especially plugins that or components that aren't used that often by businesses you know like it's it's only uh, a particular type of application that needs a need something you know like like a kanban board is not going to be used in every application but it's going to be used by a bunch of companies in in some applications so the oracle it doesn't make sense for them to introduce that because everyone will say kind of a bit like web sheets why are you working on that when hardly anyone's using that we want you to work on core stuff you know so yeah. that that is really what's key is core core stuff and then companies like united codes and ours that can provide additional things on top of that 
you know, and, and that's really where the commercial opportunities are. And hopefully other companies come along. You know, we, we like competition. You know, it, it makes us work harder and better. Uh, you know, we don't get lazy. You know, like like United Codes coming along, you know, actually put a fire under us to, to do a little bit more. We already had these plans in place. And then when we found out about them, you know, when we are sort of before we released anything, um, you know, we, we got a little bit like, you know, uh, well, got a fire lit under us and, and started working a bit harder and, and stuff like that. Um, but it didn't derail any of our plans. It, it just, you know, it, it's just really good to see other, other companies in the space. Yeah, yeah, so I, what, I agree, I agree. Yeah, you know, what they say- like to see is, uh, sorry, just the, the last thing I'll say probably. Yeah. What we would like to see is in, in, in the community that the adoption of plugins is, is getting bigger and better. So we, we don't want to see anyone hanging there with a bitter feeling because a plugin they use doesn't work or has security problems. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's one of the reasons we, we started to, to introduce open source plugins. Uh, well, that's, I mean, that's always going to happen though. You're not going to stop that. There's always going to be someone who gets bitten, you know, like, like even by commercial plugins because they're, they, you know, maybe they're just not happy with what they get. You well, know. yeah, but now they have a place to go. I mean, I, I well, you know, you guys supporting other uh, uh, other developers plugins. So if the, like the, the, the gentleman that had a bad experience, uh, if he reaches out to you guys, you guys are going to be able to help him with that plugin that is uh, prohibiting him from going to 20 by two. Well, so there is a limit to, I, I would say, because, you know, like maybe, you know, code quality, you'd have to look at some of these things. It's, sometimes it's not cost effective for someone to come in and fix these things too. You know, like companies don't have the money to fix the problem. Um, so that's something to be really aware of actually is when you're taking on plugins is, you know, if you're doing it for a non-profit organization or, or, or something, you know, like, like that there's no money, you know, like that you're doing it you know, for the love of it and stuff like that, you, you really should be careful and, and think about the decisions that you're making um, because, you know, they might not be in a position to get it fixed. Yeah, so, that's true. You know, the, so, where I see, um, where I bump up against uh, FOEX is whenever we've, we're doing some work, maybe a company is going from forms to Apex. And it seems like, with my experiences, those, those, those previous forms customers want to see certain forms, you know, look and feel, whatever, brought over, and that's where they've, they've brought the FOEX plugins in. Uh, do you guys see that there's, um, you guys see that as a really common use case for your plugins? Is somebody going from forms to Apex, and they want to bring that, that, that look and feel over? So that, that, that's a difficult one because we, we you know, I think overall, roughly 50% of our customers for the plugin framework have a forms background, uh, but most of them did not migrate their old forms applications. It's always about finding out what they really need, and and we usually advise to hey rethink, you know, look at what you had back then, and and let's let's take this opportunity and redesign, and then maybe make it simpler, make it easier. Um, but you know, if if you need that feature, then we can provide that. Uh, yeah. We 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 I don't want to get limited to hey, those are the guys replicating forms because it's that's not the intention. It's offering possibilities. Yeah, that's really what our advice is to people too. Um, you know, is is to take that opportunity to kind of think things through. Your business processes likely have changed. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these forms projects are, are kind of long in the tooth. Um, I do want to, I do want to close on something else uh, with something else. Is the the Apex community, and you mentioned that the guys over at uh, United Codes, uh, you know, entering the plug-in space and doing some things, kind of lit a fire underneath you guys. But I mean, you know, we're all we're all we're all competitors. But at the end of the day, we're all friends, and I really, really enjoy uh, the community that uh, that Joel and Mike uh, uh, have continued to foster, because you know we um, we really we really know that we can just pick up the phone and call you guys, and where we can help each other out, we always do, uh, and and I just don't see that in other in other communities. 
you know, it's just, just a really, a really special, special community that we find ourselves in. So I'm glad you guys are in it. I'm glad you guys are going to continue to be in it in, into the future. Well, that's, that's really nice, mate. I think part of it too is it's global, you know, like, so, you know, you guys are Canada and America where we're in Austria and, and Europe and stuff like that. And, you know, like it, it, it brings a, a diverse group of people together, but you share one common thing, which is uh, for me, it's a passion about Apex, about the design of it. You know, it's really the design, the dynamic design, metadata driven, the unique characteristic of that. You can't find it anywhere else. And, you know, on top of the most powerful database in the world, I mean, like you've got maximum power, maximum solution capability, you know, like, like it scratches so many itches. You know whether you're a, a, a novice and it helps you really create things quickly, or whether you're an expert. And it's in the clouds, right? Oh, the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> but but I think that's the thing that that brings everybody together is that common passion of of you know just development and 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 the tool that well you know Apex brings joy. You know I, it's a bit of a cliche, and I know I probably sound like a real nerd, or, or or you know I need to get a hobby. You know, because my hobby was Apex, you know, and then it turned into a business. And now I found, found myself with no hobby, you know, well, <laughs> skiing, going skiing. Well, we're going to we're going to get you on your uh, we, we're going to get you started on your vacation here, uh, Matt. We uh, we really appreciate the two of you joining us. And uh, Francis, I appreciate you uh, flying right seat here. And uh, we're going to. Uh, we're going to have, our, I think, our next uh, session, Michelle, is uh, going to be with, uh, is it going yes. to be with MTA? With yeah. So, um, oh, with uh, do you hear me? I muted because of the Yeah, we hear, you. Well, we hear you. All right. So, coming up next, tomorrow, we have our last instant tips of the season. So, join us for that. Insider will be back in January with Niels De Bruyne. Yes. And Moritz Klein talking about flows for Apex. And actually, I think they're on, are they on office hours today yes. as well? Yes. So you might yeah. want to check that out um, yeah. as well. If anybody interested in, in workflows for Apex, they've got uh, a really good, uh, a really good tool out. Um, Francis, this was something you wanted to. Yes. So uh, make sure that you go there. And if you're using Apex, uh, write a review. Okay. There you go. Thanks, Joel, uh, and and help the Apex team to uh, to uh, to support and then Gartner to know about Apex. So uh, Gartner is doing a study on low code uh, tools, and every year there's a the survey to uh, to fill out. So go there and 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 then please uh, fill it out, help out the community. Do it now. <laughs> right now and guys um, i have to say this is the last insider before we all go on out for the holidays so we had a little something for you our friends <laughs> in the insider community francis is cringing but i i, yeah. I have to share i have to share. <laughs> as long as it's not a paper cut <laughs> oh no <laughs> You aren't ready for this, friends oh in the insider God. community. Where is my? Oh lordy, lordy, oh, lordy! Yeah, <laughs> 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 All right. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say I do a, I do an elf one of myself every year. Actually. Oh yeah, <laughs> and send we it don't to the take team. ourselves too seriously here. But for those of you uh, celebrating, um, happy holidays! Um, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you being part of our insider community. Um, Peter and Matt, thank you so much for being with us today. We really enjoyed uh, having you on and chatting about the lessons. Us. Is there anything that you wanted to share before we, like Monty says, dance on out of here for and give 2020 a bit of a kick in the derriere? Well, hey, I mean, things are only going to get better, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, nowhere to go but up, guys. Nowhere to go but up. And uh, so having said that, uh, <laughs> Let's, in fact, dance on out of here. Mark, if you'll cue the music. And thank you, guys. Uh, Peter, Matt, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for attending. 
Uh, thank you, you all for, hope you've enjoyed being on the inside. Happy yeah. holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. You in 2021. Viva <laughs> Yoloa. <laughs> oh. You've been listening to the Insum Insider.